Hello guys, welcome to my sixth video about hyperbola. Um, this time, we will be discussing the summary of the graph. And this is the image of the graph last time. The center is actually 3 and negative 1. And remember, we used the value of A, which is 3, to identify the vertices. So that was vertex 1 and vertex 2. Remember that we located the vertices using the center. Correct? That was 3 and negative 1. So, relating this concept to the review that we had last time, center is now the starting point, and then we are moving horizont horizontally. That means we move right and left. And how many points did we move? That is 3. Okay? So, since this is a horizontal movement, then that means there's a change in X. Okay? So, there's a change in X in horizontal movement. Or in short, there's only a change in the X coordinate. So, it should be 3 plus 3 in the X coordinate. Again, since this is horizontal movement, then based on the review that we had last time, there is only a change in the X coordinate. So, instead of 3, we have now 3 plus 3. Why plus 3? It's because in the vertex 1, we move at the right. In vertex 2, we have 3 minus 3 because we have moved 3 units going left. Okay? So, the coordinates will be 6 and negative 1 for vertex 1 and 0 and negative 1 for vertex 2. So, again, notice that the y coordinate coordinates never change. It's because this is a horizontal movement and there is only a change in the x coordinate. B equals 4 to locate the co vertices. So, for the co vertices, remember our starting point was the center as well. So, we started at the center. And then we moved 4 units upwards and 4 units downwards. That means there is a vertical movement. Remember that if there is a vertical movement based on the review, there is a change in the y coordinate. So negative 1 is expected to change. This time the coordinates will be 3 and negative 1 plus 4 for co vertex 1. We added 4 to the y coordinate because it is moving upwards. For co-vertex 2, since we move downwards, then guess what? We have 3 and negative 1 minus 4. It's a minus 4 because we move 4 units going downwards. So we have this final coordinates 3, 3 for co-vertex 1 and 3, negative 5 for co-vertex 2. Now for the foci, we have to recall the value C, which was 5. Okay. Remember that we used uh, C, the C units or 5 units to locate focus 1 and focus 2. We started from the center, thus for focus 1 and focus 2, we will still consider the center as the starting point. And since this is horizontal, horizontal movements, then we need to consider change in X. So 3 is expected to change. And that is 5 units right, 5 units left. Which means we had we uh, we have to add five for focus one and we have to subtract five for focus two. We have therefore eight negative one as the coordinates of focus one and negative two negative one for the coordinates of focus two. As for the equations of the directrices, take note, guys. This will be equations already because directrices are lines, not points. For the equations of directrices, notice that they are vertical, which means we have to consider x equals a. You don't need to memorize, just consider, just imagine a vertical line in which axis will it cross. Okay, So in which axis will the vertical line cross? Of course, the answer should be, or the answer will be x axis, of course. So you'll just remember x and then followed by the x intercept x equals a this time you have x equals 3 but we are not done yet we will be using 3 as the starting point 
Why do we use three? Because if you may recall, we started from the center, we move 1.8 units going to this mark, and then we draw the, the directrix. That's what we did when we draw the graph. Again, let me repeat. We started from the center, we move 1.8 units going to this mark, and then we draw the vertical line to have the directrix. So basically, we started from the center. So we will take now the starting x coordinate, which is, I mean, the starting x intercept, which is 3. Now, since we move 1.8 units right, then I have to add 1.8. But then, okay, we will not be using the decimal form. We will be using the fraction form because we are to get the equation. As much as possible, we will not be using the decimal form unless we don't have choice. Okay, so you have 9 over 5. And then for the right text 2, it will be a minus. So 3 minus 9 over 5 because we move going left. Using a calculator, you will get 24 over 5. I suggest you use a calculator for um, easier, faster, and more accurate results. And then, you may multiply the whole equation by 5 to get 5x equals 24, or you may use cross-multiplication method if you want. After which, you, you may consider additive inverse or transpose, as you know. So you have 5x minus 24 equals 0 and that is the general equation of the rectrix 1 for the rectrix 2 this should be x equals 6 over 5 again just use the calculator and then you have 5x equals 6 by then you have 5x minus 6 equals 0 that is the general equation of the rectrix 2 next will be the four endpoints of the lateral lateral recta but we will be um, getting R1 and R3 first before R2 and R4. R1 and R3 are these endpoints of the lapis rectum at the right. Okay. And remember, or just notice based on the illustration, R1 and R3 were located using F1. Okay, so again, if you can still recall, we have F1 and then we moved upwards 5.33 units and also 5.33 units down, correct? So, we will consider 8 negative 1 as our starting point. What is 8 negative 1 anyway? That is our focus one. That's F1 here. So, 8 negative 1 is our starting point, not anymore the center. Guys, it is very important for you to understand, okay? We will be using the starting point, not the center all the time. If, if you can actually go back here in Vertex 1 and Vertex 2, Vertex 1 and Vertex 2 started, or I mean, we got Vertex 1 and Vertex 2 using the center. Covertices, we use the center. For the foci, we use the center. The directrices, we use the center. But this time for R1 and R3, we use the focus. So which means my F1 will be the starting point. Okay, so what do we do? From this starting point, 8 and negative 1. Remember, I moved upwards 5.33 units. As I, as I said, okay, I will not be using the decimal form as much as possible. So I will be using 16 over 3 this time. Recall? Can you still recall this one? This is half of the lattice rectum. Obviously, F1 to R1 is just half of the lattice rectum. So, negative 1 will be added by 16 over 3. Of course, on the other side for R3, I, I need to subtract because I am moving downwards. Anyway, I hope that you all, you understand this part here. I am adding and subtracting um, uh, 16 over 3 from negative 1 because we are to change the Y coordinate. Remember, this is vertical movement, upwards and downwards. So only the Y coordinate will change. What happens next is you may use your um, brilliant calculator. You have 8 and 13 over 3. And for R3, you have 8 and negative 19 over 3. Okay. For R2 and R4, actually, this time locating or identifying the coordinates will be easier compared to R1 and R3. 
negative 2 and negative 1 is our starting point because in the illustration if you may observe f2 is our starting point moving up moving downwards okay so i have to use negative 2 or negative 1 which is our focus 2 by then i have to refer on r1 why why do i do that so for r2 look at r2 it is just aligned with r1 which means they share the same y coordinate or actually guys all you have to do is this just copy the x coordinate because it will not change right this is vertical movement sorry sorry for r4 i have also to refer r3 just look at this illustration r4 and r3 are just aligned okay let me go back i'll just copy negative 2 why because there's only a change in the y coordinate okay because this is vertical movement now what's the y coordinate people since r1 r1 are just aligned then just copy the y coordinate of r1 it's easy and then for r4 since r3 and r4 are aligned then all you have to do is to copy negative 2 here and then just copy negative 19 over 3 for your y coordinate i hope that you understand this part that we only copied negative 19 over 3 because r3 and r4 are just aligned horizontally which means they will share the same y coordinate okay so r2 and r1 also we did the same we only copied since they are aligned horizontally so they have the same y coordinates actually guys we have not found the equations of the asymptotes yet that is a special part so i will be making um, a different video for that that's all for now goodbye